Hey there everybody, today on Retirement Rescue, we're going to be talking about eight ways to cut your daily expenses right now and have more money next month. Coming up next! Welcome everybody, my name is Dee Burks and this is Retirement Rescue, where you learn to make money, save money, and live well for retirement. Now, today we're going to be ta talking all about how to cut your expenses. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe for more helpful videos. And if you have a question about retirement, drop it in the comments and we'll be answering those as we go along. The fastest way to have more money right now to deal with your expenses, to save for retirement, to pay off debt, whatever you want to do, is to cut your everyday expenses. It's really easy to focus on those big expenses, but really the things that get us in trouble our daily habits, the money we spend every day, the $5, the $10, the $2 here, $10 there, that gets us in trouble. No matter what you're wanting to save money for, these tips will help you. Now to start, what I want you to do is get all of your statements. You've got to deal with real numbers. I mean, let's face it, people. Guessing at it hasn't worked. It's not working now. It's not going to work tomorrow. Don't guess at your numbers. Get all of your statements, your bank statements, your credit card statements, everything you do, and lay it out. Deal with real numbers. Highlight anything that's a recurring charge. Now, recurring charges might be the little $4 app that's charging you every month, the $2.84 from iTunes, the subscription for your gym membership or your yoga class or some other class. Look at those recurring charges that are coming in every month. And let's talk a little bit about that gym membership. Paying for a membership doesn't make you skinny or healthy or any of that. If you paid in January for your membership, and you only went three times in January, why are you still paying? The truth is, you know, I think our intentions get us in trouble there. We intend to be really healthy, so we're going to pay for that gym membership, and then just feel too guilty to cancel it. Now, if you're paying 60 bucks a month, and let's just use that number out of the air, but 60 bucks a month for a gym membership, that's $720 a year. If you only go really, really, only go a few times a year, is it worth that $720? The answer for no, most people is no. And now that's a large recurring charge, but maybe you have one for a um, food club membership or some other membership you just don't use. If you don't use it, get rid of it. Those recurring charges will kill you. So get rid of those recurring charges. That's step number one. Now step number two. If you need something, piece of equipment, something to use temporarily, look on Craigslist or ask a friend. Let's go back to the exercise idea for just a second. Now, a few years back, I bought a piece of exercise equipment on Craigslist. I wanted to be able to exercise in my home. I lived in Texas. It's a thousand degrees all the time. It was miserable to even walk in the neighborhood. And there's mosquitoes. Ooh. And so it was just miserable. I wanted something indoor that I could do day, night, middle of the day, whatever. And so I looked on Craigslist and a guy was selling this uh, top of the line Nordic track. It was a beautiful piece of equipment. He just didn't use it anymore. He sold it to me for $100. So for $100, I used that piece of equipment for about two years and I used it every single day. I got great use out of my $100. I then moved to the mountains where there's trails everywhere and I don't need a Nordic track. And so I sold it to a friend who was also needing a piece of equipment. Ask your friends and family. Odds are there's someone with an exercise bike, a treadmill, that the sitting in their bedroom being used to hold up clothes that they're not wearing and they would gladly sell it to you. That is a way better use of your money while still getting the exercise you need which is the whole point. And if it's sitting in your bedroom, it'll make you feel even more guilty instead of just paying your gym membership. So don't think you have to buy the top of the line piece of equipment that just came out, that has the subscription, that sets you up on payments. That's crazy. No need to do that. So look around and see what you have or what your friends may have that they want to get rid of. Same is true if you need something temporarily, like tools, a particular tool that you don't have. You can either rent it or you can ask your friends and family if they maybe have one. And the cool thing about that is, um, whenever I've asked somebody, hey, do you have this or do you have that? 
they'll come over and help with whatever project I'm, I'm working on. And then I'll turn around and go help them with their projects. And so that has worked out really well. So having those connections with friends and family, being able to share certain things and return them every time, let's not forget that part, um, is really cost effective. And it's people helping people. You don't have to buy every single thing you need. The third way to really cut expenses every single day is to use discounts and coupons. A lot of retailers, food establishments, and almost everywhere have special days you can get a discount or special times you can get a discount. They offer coupons on a regular basis. A lot of these you can just search online. Everybody from Hobby Lobby to Applebee's will have a coupon. Use it. Even if it just saves you a tip, even if it just pays for the taxes, that, that's something. And when you think about that, that's 8 to 10% usually is what you'll get. Sometimes you'll get an even bigger discount, 20%, 30%. That is money in your pocket right then. Money you're not spending today. So be sure and look at those discounts. Uh, and as you age, especially over 50, uh, you start to get more and more discounts. You get There are veterans discounts. There are over 50 discounts. There are over 55 discounts. There are over, you know, so just look at those discounts and see what it is that you can save because that's money they're giving you for free. So take it. One of the things that happens, especially once all your kids leave home, is you stop cooking. It gets really easy not to cook just for one or two people. One of the things that I like to talk to people about is not necessarily not eating out all the time. Now, don't get me wrong, lowering the number of times you eat out certainly does save you money. However, especially if you're one person, there are times that's not true. Let's talk about a pizza. Have you ever bought all the stuff for a pizza? It's like 30 bucks. And then you still have to go home and make it and clean up. When you can buy one for less than $10 usually, and you have several meals. So think through it. Is there a way you split a meal? If you're two people, can you split a meal? Instead of buying two meals, buy one. If you're meeting friends and family, meet them for lunch instead of for dinner. Uh, those dinner time hours, uh, the same restaurant, it might be double the ticket at dinner time that it is at lunch. And the food is just as good at lunch. So go to lunch, go to breakfast. Those are the times when the meals are much less expensive um, and they're just as good. So, so do that. If you do go uh, to dinner with a group of friends or family, get an appetizer. Just eat an appetizer. Uh, the appetizers these days are huge and more than enough for one person. Now let's say you do go and you do get an entree. Well, instead of getting the light version of the meal, which usually only saves you a dollar or two, go ahead and get the full version and then you have two meals. Take it home with you. Um, that is a, a great way to stretch your eating out dollars. Number five on ways to cut your expenses today is get a roommate. You know the old Golden Girls idea. And I know, I was young, I was in my 20s when the Golden Girls were on, and we would make fun of them. Oh, how ridiculous. I so get it now. I really do. Because, you know, if you have a single family home that's got quite a bit of room, it is a great way to stretch your dollars. Those things that work for 20 year olds that are single or two people at the most also work when you get over 50. Because all your kids have left, you don't need all that room, so you can either rent those rooms out or you can become one of those people who rents a room from someone. This is really great for extended families in a lot of cases. You know, there are kids that would love to have grandma come live with them or live in a little granny pod behind the house. Or um, there are siblings of the same age, similar age, that can share um, a home and really it'd be cost effective for everyone. They have a live-in dog sitter, a live-in home sitter. It's great. It works out for everyone. Number six, evaluate your utilities. Now, a lot of people already do this. But one of the things you can do if you're not already doing it is setting yourself up on one of the budget billing plans. Most utilities allow you to spread the cost out over a year, whether that's electric or gas or whichever utility. Being able to know what to budget for every month is really great because you don't have those huge expenses in the winter or in the summer, either one, and you're able to really plan ahead and budget for that utility all year long and not get in trouble uh, when you have an unexpectedly large bill. Now when I say evaluate your utilities, I also mean evaluate how you use them. Um, if you do live in a large house by yourself, close off some of those rooms. Um, put the heating and cooling in the rooms you actually use. I realize this sounds so elementary, but so many people don't do it. They absolutely don't do it. 
So if that's your situation, then do some of that. Uh, lower those utilities by looking at how you use it. Be sure you have LED bulbs in your fixtures in your house. And in some states, it's been required for a while that you have LED. But it is amazing to me how uh, people have bulbs they don't think about. The decorative bulbs, the bulbs in their, in their ceiling fan, and they don't think about using LED there. Uh, LEDs save you a tremendous amount of money. Um, one of the other areas that uh, people often don't think about is they have LEDs everywhere and they think they're doing so great and then they pull out their Christmas lights that are 15 years old that are not LED and their electric meters are spinning. So don't do that. You know, buy new LED Christmas lights. They're very inexpensive. And by the way, I have for years used these little twinkle lights for deck lighting, for um, step lighting, for lighting in the carport. They're a great, great way to light an area very inexpensively, and they don't attract bugs. So if you're sitting on your deck at, at night and you have little twinkle lights, you can sit out there comfortably and not attract every insect in the neighborhood, which is great. Number seven, and this is going to be tough for some people, stop shopping. Get out of the stores. We become such creatures of habit that there are a lot of people who will just walk in a store to look around. And as we all know, there's no such thing as looking. That's a pre-buying behavior. So stop it. Don't go in the store. You don't need anything, don't go. This is true in every single store. Don't wander around Harbor Freight, Dad. Don't do that. You're going to end up buying a few things. Don't wander around, you know, to see what the Christmas sales are. No, you don't need to. And while we're at it, let's talk about online shopping. You know, every single online shopping retailer everywhere, when you set up an account, you have to give them your email. What you should immediately do after that, when they send you the first email, is unsubscribe. Uh, one of the issues in online shopping is you're constantly being bombarded with these emails about, oh, save this, oh, get our new that. And those things don't help you. It is like being in a store 24-7. So just unsubscribe or send those to your, to your spam folder. You're likely to buy more if they constantly send you these emails. They know that. So don't play that game and just unsubscribe. That keeps you out of trouble and keeps your money in the bank. Number eight, shop sales. And when I say sales, I mean not just weekly sales. Um, every food item, almost every food item, comes up for sale at least three to four times a year on a regular basis. Every kind of meat, every kind of um, dairy product, they all come up for sale. And it doesn't take very long for you to figure out when those sales are. Um, you know that hamburgers are going to be on sale July 4th weekend. You know it's going to be on sale Labor Day weekend. You know it's going to be on sale right before Christmas. <laughs> so use that to your advantage. Now, I'm not a big fan of shopping at either Costco or anywhere where you buy in bulk. Um, and it's not that I'm against these places. They're good in theory. But when you're down to one or two people in your household, it does not make sense most of the time. You won't actually use those things. And you won't use them in sufficient quantity to justify the membership that you're paying. So once you get down to one or two people in your household, it is probably a good idea to delete that membership and just shop the normal sales because you'll save even more money because you're not buying in bulk and having a lot of it go to waste. There are very few things that really need to be bought in bulk if you are a single or two person household. Um, now one of those things might be toilet paper or paper towels, paper products. Those you can buy in bulk. You know you're going to need them, but only if you have storage space. That's another thing. If you get a smaller place, storage space is at more of a premium. And really, you don't go through those things as fast as you think you will. Um, <clears throat> and so it's good to know exactly what you need and not overstock. Now when we talk about shopping sales, one of the things that I'm a really big advocate for is buying less, but buying quality. Now you know most of the higher quality retailers frequently put things on sale. They always have a big sale in January. They always have a big sale in July and August. So buy things then. Buy things that are higher quality. But let me tell you, when a high quality retailer puts things on sale, it's a good sale. 
and you might get you a $10 or $12 t-shirt, but that t-shirt is high quality and it will last you for literally years as opposed to buying one for $5 that doesn't even last the season. Nothing worse than wearing a cheap, cheap, there's nothing worse than wearing a tee, there is nothing worse than wearing a cheap t-shirt. It took me six times to say cheap t-shirt. Can you believe that? Anyway, there's nothing worse than a cheap t-shirt. Now the main point of these eight concepts is to take action right now. Start on these things today and you will have more money in your pocket next month, but you have to start. Now if you found this information useful, hit the subscribe button and share with someone else that you think might also like this channel. I greatly appreciate it. I'll see you next time.